Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of Witty Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of physics as in accordance with the syllabus of VI Teacher Police. So, let's start off with today's set. Here's our first question. The ratio of radii of the first three Bohr orbits is 1 is to half is to 1 third, 1 is to 2 is to 3, 1 is to 4 is to 9, or 1 is to 8 is to 27. So, how are we going to solve this question? Well, we're asked to find the ratio of the radius of the f radii of the first three Bohr or orbits. So, how do we calculate the radius of an nth Bohr orbit. It's calculated as Rn equals 0 0.529, which is a constant, times n square over z angstroms. Angstroms here is the unit, 0.529 is um, the constant, n here stands for the orbit number, and z stands for the atomic number. So when we look at the radius and the orbit number, they are related as follows. The radius of the nth Bohr orbit is directly proportional to the square of the value of n. So when we take this in proportion, so therefore r1 is to r2 is to r3, which is our question, ratio of radii of the first three Bohr orbits. So R1 is to R2 is to R3 equals 1 square is to 2 square is to 3 squared, which is equal to, well, 1 is to 4 is to 9. So therefore, we can see that option C is the correct option. Option D is for cubes. Option B is when <coughs> Rn is proportional to n, which is wrong. And option A is when uh, the radius is inversely proportional to the orbit number, which is also wrong. So therefore, options A, B, and D are incorrect. The correct option is option C. The radius of the Bohr orbit is directly proportional to the square of the number of the orbit number. Now let's look at another question. The given electrical network is equivalent to OR gate, NOR gate, NOT gate, AND gate. So this is based on the chapter, you know, semiconductors. <coughs> so over here, we're asked to find out whether the combination of these gates gives us a result Y and we need to find out the nature of that result in order to find out which type of gate is the given which type of gate is it close to so this now basically there are three types of gates and or and not so um and is like this or is like this and not is like this now when we add the the you know sphere to the or or the and gate they become nand and nor and if you add a uh, a curve before the or gate connected by a straight line and that's called the zor gate so those are the types of gates that you don't commonly encounter so what the gates does is AND means um, both A and B are present together, while OR is A or B may be present, and NOT means A is present without B, or B is present without A, depending on which one you're preferring. So you have two elements, A and B, fed into this gate. Now this first half is or while the sphere represents not so therefore what we have is a nor gate 
So in the OR section, you get A plus B, so you add the two together. And since we have the NOT section, to make it a NOR gate, you add its complement. You make it as a complement. Now this A plus B complement is further s is now split up again into two two parts, A plus B complement on two sides, and then it's fed to another NOR gate. So what we get is A plus B complement complement, which basically is A plus B. Now A plus B is the input that's present. When we put it into this gate, this one is the NOT, the pure NOT gate. So therefore, whatever is put in, its complement is the outcome, which is Y. So therefore, Y will be A plus B, the whole complement. Now, if you have two inputs put in together, and if you get the result as A plus B complement, then that means that the gate has similar characteristics to the NOR gate. So therefore, option B, NOR gate, is the correct answer. OR is incorrect because for that it has to be A plus B. Uh, NOT is uh, incorrect too because it has to be A cross A minus B, and at, for AND it would have to be A times B. Now let's look at the final question. Array PQ is incident on the refracting surface BA, is refracted in a prism BAC as shown in the figure, and emerges from the other refracting phase AC as RS, such that AQ equals AR. If the angle of prism A is 60 degrees and the refractive index of the material is root 3, then find the angle of deviation. So basically, you have a prism and light is refracted through it. What the uh, uh, most important things given here is that AQ equals AR. So these two sides of the triangle made by the refracted ray are equal. So the sides of the prism are equal. We also know that the angle of prism is 60. And we know that the refractive index of the prism, so that's n21, is equal to root 3. And the angle of deviation of the ray is 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, none of these. So how do we solve this question? Well, as you can see, this right here is the point of incidence, and you draw a normal, which is perpendicular all right it kinda looks wonky but uh, it is to be made as perpendicular similarly you can make another perpendicular from R which is the point of emergence so, if we try to make it as normal as possible, it looks something like that. So these are normals 1 and 2. So this here is the angle of refraction, 1 and 2. <clears throat> and moving on, if you try to you know, retrace the path of the angle of incidence goes something like that, and if you retrace the path of the angle of refraction, I mean, of, of the refracted ray, it goes and intersects the other path where the incident ray was supposed to go, and then both of these then create an angle here known as the angle of deviation. So, how do we solve this question? Well, first off, the angle of prism is 60 degrees, and we also know that the sides AQ and AR are same, are equal. So what does this mean? This means that these two angles, RQA and ARQ, 
both of these angles are equal and also since the remaining angle is 60 degrees the sum of these two angles will be 120 when you divide that by 2 you get 60 degrees so both of these angles are also 60 degrees and since the since the uh, normal is perpendicular to the prism wall so therefore the angle of R1 equals 30 degrees which is also the value of R2 now from here we need to find out the angle of incidence and the angle of emergence for that we use the refractive index of the prism and find out the values using Snell's law now according to Snell's law sine i over sine r or in this case r1 <coughs> equals n21 so when you put that um, <coughs> in uh, values you get sine i divided by sine 30 as equal to root 3 so we can pull that here so therefore sine i equals root 3 times sine 30 which is 1 by 2 <clears throat> so therefore sine i equals root 3 by 2 so therefore sine i equals sine 60 degrees so therefore the angle of incidence is equal to 60 degrees now using <clears throat> the same Snell's law we get sine r2 over sine e equals 1 upon the refractive index of the prism so therefore that's 1 over root 3 sine r2 is again sine 30 so therefore sine r2 over 1 over root 3 gives you sine 30 which is half <coughs> So, um, technically, if you solve this particular problem, <clears throat> what we're going to end up, let's write out the, uh, what do you call, final equation, and then you'll get sine E on the left-hand side, <clears throat> and when you take 1 by root 3 to the other side, you get root 3 times sine r2, which is sine 30. So that's again root 3 by 2, which is equal to sine 60. So therefore, the angle of emergence is also 60 degrees. We know that the angle of prism is also 60 degrees. So angle A equals 60 degrees. Now, why do we need to find all this? because the formula for the angle of deviation is angle of incidence plus angle of emergence minus angle of prism which is equal to 60 plus 60 minus 60 both of these cancel each other out so therefore the angle of <coughs> deviation of the ray is actually option A 60 degrees so therefore the correct option is option A 60 degrees so that concludes this episode of Witty Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you've liked this video, then please press the right like button and also share it with your friends as well as others who are in need. And if you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the notifications icon present below the video. So, until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.